Tesla's Giga Berlin facility is now completely accredited and producing vehicles, which will begin to be delivered to consumers on March 22. This is Europe's most modern auto production facility. One of the most modern manufacturing facilities in the world, and this is how Tesla begins to flood the European market with their automobiles, bringing them one step closer to being the world's largest automaker. But the route to opening Giga Berlin has not been smooth, in fact, Elon Musk and his colleagues have struggled mightily to make this happen. We all know the Germans are diligent and hold high standards, but even Elon didn't expect the result after going head-to-head -head with the German bureaucracy. Nonetheless, Tesla triumphed, and today we'll look at the narrative of Giga Berlin as it approaches its first customer deliveries, and we'll discuss why this is more than just another car plant. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell symbol. On March 4, 2022, the German state of Brandenburg approved the construction of Tesla's first electric car factory in Europe, but work on the factory began in late May of 2020. Tesla was able to construct this entire project thanks to a series of 20 pre-approvals from the state of Brandenburg, which is where Giga Berlin is located. It isn't officially in the city, because it is named after a nearby suburb called Grunheide, but Giga Grunheide, or Giga Brandenburg, don't have the same clout in the international market. But the major point is that the way these approvals are handled is absurd. Tesla was permitted to begin construction of a plant based on pre-approvals, but they are not permitted to open the factory until final permission is received, thus they do so at their own risk. The consequence of not gaining that final approval would be that they would have to practically dismantle the entire facility and return the land to its former state, according to German law. They aren't fooling around. However, Elon Musk expected a quick construction and set up procedure that would see model Y automobiles coming off the manufacturing line in July 2021. Now it's March 2022, and Elon is planning his first delivery party just weeks after state officials given their seal of approval to the entire operation in an official statement they prepared. The 536-page judgment allowed a plant capable of producing up to 500,000 automobiles per year, as well as aluminum smelting plants and aluminum foundry designs for surface treatment heat generation and storage. Battery cell manufacture, a functioning wastewater treatment plant, a fire department equipment house, a high bay warehouse, as well as laboratories and workshops are all part of the site. The permission documents for Giga Berlin with with the supporting application documents, expert views, and declarations, total more than 23,727 pages spread across 66 files, allowing all of Tesla's existing infrastructure to remain in place. What a system, however Tesla got off easy in comparison to several other significant projects in Berlin. After a decade of delays, the new Berlin airport eventually opened in 2021, and the planning process for the airport began 30 years ago. So that's how they do things in that part of the world, but this Tesla experience could be a catalyst for change in the German system. Officials appear to have concluded that if they want large investments from multinational corporations, they would have to compromise on the process. Following the Giga Final Factory's approval, Brandenburg Minister of Economic Affairs Jörg Steinbock, who has been a strong supporter of Tesla throughout this process, issued a statement saying that a company should not be penalized if it improves the process while also correcting flaws in the original proposal. He's referring to several late Tesla breakthroughs that contributed to the process's length. Tesla elected to include a battery cell production building in the plant proposal, which caused the approval process to be delayed till 2021. Making that one modification sparked a fresh round of public consultation, giving voice to Tesla's many local critics, who were then authorized to testify at public hearings and file lawsuits in German courts. No revisions to the proposal can be made without sparking a fresh round of public comments and hearings, according to the system. Without all of the backtracking, Steinbock admits that clearance could have been given within a year and a half of construction in the summer of 2021. Steinbock also expects that, as a result of the lessons learnt with Tesla, future developments in the Berlin area will go more quickly. This sentiment extends to the country's national government, with Robert Havoc, the head of Germany's Green Party, declaring that building of renewable energy projects in the country should be done at Tesla speed. 
The entire tale of Giga Berlin has been a back and forth between Tesla and German environmental crusaders, who would rather that no factories ever be built, even if factories that create electric vehicles have a net benefit for the environment. The first protests were against Tesla cutting down trees to make room for the development, so Tesla agreed to plant three new trees for every tree they chopped down, with the goal of replanting a higher quality, more natural forest than the one they pulled down. The website for Giga Berlin was a man-made forest that was created solely to be mulched and transformed into cardboard boxes, so every tree was identical and planted in an industrial style. Then there were the bats, according to residents, who pointed out that the building location was home to an endangered bat species. Tesla's construction would have interfered with the bats' mating season, and disrupting that cycle would have been harmful to the species. Tesla was able to relocate the bats to a new place, while they were still in their late winter hibernation period to fix the problem. Tesla had to cease factory development, when it was lizards and snakes in December 2020, because they risked upsetting hibernating lizards and snakes. The animals had to be transported once more with extreme caution. There was also the issue of water. Some people were concerned that the Giga factory would consume too much water from the Brandenburg reservoirs, which is a valid concern. Water is used extensively in factories, like these that produce massive high-tech products on an industrial scale. Giga Berlin will most likely require as much water as a small city in its first phase of operation, and that usage will more than double by the time it is completely operational. Tesla had to wait until this week to acquire permission to utilize local water. The facility had been permitted, but due to persistent protests and objections, it had not been cleared for industrial water use. That has now been resolved, and production is now underway. Here's what we know about Gigafactory vehicle production. As of March, Berlin test production of the Model Y has achieved 100 units per day at maximum productivity implying a weekly production rate of 500 units once the facility is up and operating. We know that by the end of April, the goal is to reach 1,000 cars every week. Tesla is developing a performance variant of the Model Y. These are now being built using the normal 2170 battery pack that Tesla China is supplying to Germany, and these German Teslas will have both front and rear Giga castings. Hundreds of them are already lined up in parking areas outside the facility, neatly parked in perfect straight lines, as one would expect from a German team. We still don't have a clear picture of the new paint hues that are projected to arrive from this Giga factory, because these are primarily dark with a few white spots. We know that 30 vehicles will be delivered on March 22nd at the event, and we've heard that they were all built on March 14th. Hundreds of vehicles have been produced since clearance was granted, and they will be delivered to clients by the end of March. On the factory floor, two Gigapress machines are now operational, with two more presses being installed at this time. Each press can produce 2,500 castings every week, which equates to 1,250 vehicles per press at two per car. To meet Tesla's optimum rate of 10,000 vehicles per week, eight gigapress machines will be required. A second production shift will be established in June 2022 to increase vehicle output by building automobiles 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The plant will be retooled for 4,680 battery and structural pack integration and production will be shut down for a three-week period sometime in the second part of this year. During the three-week suspension of vehicle production, Resources will be diverted to the cell and pack manufacturing factory in order to stockpile next-generation battery supplies. Giga Berlin will not be a standard Tesla ramp-up. They've learned a lot from their time on the Shanghai ramp, and Tesla has a good understanding of how to build the Model Y. It's quickly becoming their best-selling vehicle, and with 4680s and structural packs still in high demand, it wouldn't be surprising if the plant hit a production rate of over 100,000 cars per year by the end of the year. Tesla has launched a new service in Germany called Tesla Drop, which allows consumers to receive their vehicle outside of typical business hours, rather than having to pick it up from a delivery facility between the hours of 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Customers who use the Tesla Drop delivery service can come at the delivery center where their car is located, 
Use the Tesla app to find and open their car, inspect the vehicle for problems, document the pickup in their Tesla account, and then drive away in their new Model Y. How convenient is it to be able to buy and pick up a car without having to speak to a single person? It's a millennial's fantasy come true. Traditional dealership models, where you have to deal with an army of sales and finance staff trying to scam you over every time they get, will be decimated by this kind of service, therefore the saga of Giga Berlin is finally finished. How optimistic are you about Berlin's output numbers? Two major issues remain. How quickly will they convert to 4,680 structural packs? And what run rate will they achieve by the end of the year? 100,000, 150,000, or can they achieve a run rate of 200,000 vehicles? Let us know what you think in the comments section. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. This is crucial for spreading our information to a wider audience. Thank you so much to everyone who has signed up for our newsletter. We'll see you in the next one, thanks for watching.